Well, it was inevitable that I had to talk about this film at least once. Kind of ironic that I'm wearing a shirt for a different Marvel film that turned out to be a lot better than this one. So, Dark Phoenix ends up being the final main X-Men film. The possible exception being New Mutants, which is now apparently scheduled for release next year. We'll see if that happens. In terms of the main X-Men cast, like Xavier, Magneto, Jean Grey, Cyclops, this is the final film. And most likely the final film of the franchise in general, because Disney bought Fox, and in a couple years, they're all going to end up being rebooted and recast. Somehow, some way. But that's for a different topic of conversation. Anyway, so Dark Phoenix focuses on the X-Team. They go into space to rescue some regular astronauts. Jean Grey absorbs this cosmic force, and she gets the nickname Phoenix. And she starts not... She really starts to, like, lose control of herself, trying to figure out what's happening to her, what she should do, ends up doing a lot of damage, gets manipulated a little bit. And a lot of people are having different opinions of what they should do with Jean Grey, and... There's really not much to tell besides that. I'm not going to get too much into details because it's still its opening weekend. I deserve the dignity of saving some spoilers. Let's start with the stuff that I liked, or at least I didn't find as bad as most of the other stuff in the film. Nicholas Colt as Hank, a.k.a. Beast, I surprisingly really liked. This could be because I have sort of recently saw the film Token, and I thought he was pretty good as J.R.R. Token. But I thought he had some nice scenes that showed some character arc for him, going through grief and going to a dark place. I, I really thought he was actually kind of good in this film. And of course, two actors that are consistently entertaining in all of these recent X-Men films are James McAvoy as Charles Xavier and Michael Fassbender as Magneto. Although it is weird to say James McAvoy as Professor X because earlier this year we saw him as the Beast from Glass and two years before that the Beast in Split. It's kind of a weird getting used to. I surprisingly find him more familiar as Beast than Charles Xavier. Anyway, I like both these characters in this film, even though they're either not given a lot to do or their writing was just not that great. With Charles Xavier specifically, they do a lot of the same beats and themes, like him being more of a morally ambiguous leader, not really being that great of a good guy to his own team, even kind of portrayed as sort of a villain from a certain perspective. I wouldn't mind that so much. They've done it kind of well in the past. But in this film, it just feels tired and just too damn familiar. With Magneto, his problem is that he just doesn't really get a lot to do. I mean, he's in the film. He does play more of a role in, like, the second half of the film, more towards the third act. But again, he's just not really given that much to do. But I still like his performance. And similar to Hank, he does get a bit of an arc and, like, some character story to go through. And let's finally get to the actual title character herself, Dark Phoenix, a.k.a. Jean Grey, played by Sophie Turner. I want to do this honestly. It might be a hot take. I liked her in this film. Okay, the writing for her in this movie is not great. It is not. But, unlike in The Last Stand, where the actress that played Jean Grey in that film, all she really did was just stare angrily at nothing. In this film, they actually tried to get her to do some stuff. I mean, she's really the only one, like one of the few only ones, to actually try and do emotion in this film. Most of the characters in this film can't even get me to feel any kind of emotion for them because they don't really show it. 
with her, she's trying. I can actually see her trying on screen. And I do kind of feel for her. Not intensely, mind you, but way more than most of the other characters. And there's a whole lot of close-ups on a whole bunch of characters' faces, probably to make up for the fact there's really not that emotion from everyone else, but... Yeah, that's just kind of obvious. Plus, Jennifer Lawrence is Mystique. In first class, I thought she was okay. I liked her a little bit more in Days of Future Past. Didn't care for her in Apocalypse. I hated her in this film. I just really did. I mean, she's given some of the worst writing for any character in this film, and that's saying something. So, a lot of people are kind of bitching that in the trailers they spoiled her death, but really, from what I can tell, people don't really care. They never really care for Jennifer Lawrence's mistake. And this is coming from someone who tried to care for her in past X-Men films. I just don't care. I like Mystique much better back in the original trilogy when she was played by a different actress. Thank God she was killed off fairly early in this film. Not super early, but early enough. And there is a lot of like, talking and actually trying to be a sort of more character-focused driven film, which I really appreciate. If this film was something m more like the original version of this movie before all the reshoots happen, and probably maybe even given our rating, it probably would have been a lot better. And actually, let's talk about the reshoots a little bit. Apparently, the original version of this movie was far more character focused, actually put some focus on Jean Grey and Cyclops' relationship, actually had Jean Grey come off as a more tortured character, borderline schizophrenic even, and in the third act climax, there would be like a big space battle between her and an invading alien army that's trying to do an actual alien full-scale invasion. The reshoots were done to cut a lot of that out, mainly in the second and third act. Partly because in terms of like people arguing about whether what they should do with Jean Grey was too much like Civil War, but also because the third act climax would be a, too much like the film Captain Marvel, in a way, with her big space battle. So it was then changed to, like, a train confrontation with a short clip in space, ultimately. I would have really liked to see the original version. I'm not sure if it would have been a lot better, but definitely probably would have been better than what we got. I mean, Simon Kinberg, the director of this film, who also wrote Last End, Last Stand, said that Last Stand ultimately failed because they took out a lot of the whole cosmic stuff for the Jean Grey and the Phoenix Force. And that's honestly what the re reshoots did for the most part. I mean, I like the idea of the Phoenix Force being a more of a cosmic energy thing, not just like an alternate personality. But yeah, speaking of cosmic stuff and aliens, let's talk about the aliens in this film. The leader, played by Jessica Chastain. First of all, I want to like her in this film. But like a lot of characters, she's just not really given the chance to actually show emotion for some reason. But in terms of the alien species in this film, why does it really need to be aliens? I mean, I get it was in the original comic story, but in the tone and atmosphere set in these X-Men films that included mutant killing robots, time travel, and a cast that has looked exactly the same since the 1960s, somehow aliens just don't fit. I mean, maybe in the original version of the film, they could have executed it in a way that made more sense and felt more like this world. But in this film, I just felt the whole alien subplot kind of out of place. Maybe that's just me, but that's just my thoughts on it. Maybe, again, it was better presented in the original version of this film, but I just don't know. I just wasn't a big fan in this version. And of course, the ending for Jean Grey in this film, I actually thought was kind of nice. Again, not the best written, but I kind of liked it. And while the special effects for the Phoenix Force, I probably would have liked it to be a little bit more of a, like a fire instead of just this cosmic force. It, I thought it still looked nice. Again, I'm not an expert in how CGI probably should look, especially in a superhero film. 
Like, for the effects used for Jean Grey slash the Phoenix Force, I kind of like how it looked. And of course, there's a final scene with Charles Xavier and Michael Fassbender, and Magneto, played by Michael Fassbender, that... Really, it's the only way they could have ended an X-Men film with those two characters doing what they ended up doing. It showed that while they have been rivals in the past, they will ultimately always be good friends to one another at the end of the day. So ultimately, overall, this is not a very good film. I'm sorry, I want to be positive about this film, but it's just not that good. There was a couple things I liked. There are some couple character performances that's not the best written, I kind of liked. And Sophie Turner does a way better job in this film because this film actually focuses on the Phoenix Forest instead of The Last Stand. Even though The Last Stand is admittedly a more entertaining film, this is technically a better adaptation of the Dark Phoenix Saga. But just because it's technically better, doesn't mean it's that great of the film. While a couple of small kernels I did like, this ultimately should, could have been a whole lot better. Those are really my final thoughts for this film. What do you think? That's a really odd suggestion. Why? Why? He has the weirdest suggestions. Anyway, that's all I really have. Like, comment, subscribe, share. I'll see you guys next time.